Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee meeting for Tuesday evening, December 3rd, 2019. Welcome to the viewers at home on Channel 22 and for those here this evening as we discuss the SAU 90 proposed 2020-2021 budget. As always, you can watch the replays of this meeting on the town website by going to the Town of Hampton website, drill down to watch Channel 22, Choose budget committee, school board, selectmen, any board meetings you watch, you can watch the re replay usually 24 hours later. Uh, I'd like to have uh, Steve Henderson lead us into the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Starting from my far left to your far right on TV at home, I'd like our members to introduce themselves. Barbara Kravitz, Secretary. Jenny Bridal, uh, school board rep. Russ Bridal, selectman's rep. Joyce Scapertis. Steve Henderson. Brian Warburton, chairman. Mike Plouffe. David Mara. Stephen LeBranch. Absent this evening is Bob Ladd, our uh, village district representative. Our first item on the agenda are the review and approval of minutes from October 15th and November 19th. We'll start with October 15th and we welcome back Barbara and thank you for uh, doing the minutes of the 19th. You did those off of tape, but we appreciate it. Uh, Tuesday, October 15th, any uh, changes on page one? Page two, page three, accept the motion on those minutes. So moved. moved by Mr. Plouffe, Second. seconded by Mr. Henderson. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now the minutes of November 19th. That was the evening we did the Hampton Police and Hampton Fire budgets. And um, those were sent to us this week by Barbara. Thank you again. Anything on page one? Anything on page two? Page three? Anything on page four? Page five? Page six, accept the motion to move the November 19th minutes. Moved by Mr. Plouffe, seconded by Mr. Henderson. Any discussion on those minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. As is customary every December, it's usually around the same date. Matter of fact, Kathleen and I were kidding each other because we both talked on December 4th, which was last year. Uh, we, we invite the SAU 90 in to talk to us about the proposed 2020-2021 budget. I want to remind the members and the viewers at home that unlike the town, the school district's budget goes from July 1st to June 30th. So we are currently in the 2019-2020 Hampton School District budget. So the budget we're going to be talking about this evening commences on July 1st of 2020. Last week, I had a second meeting with our fine superintendent of schools, Kathleen Murphy, and our new director of finance, Mariah Curtis. Thoroughly enjoyed it, uh, asked some good questions, went over preliminary layout for tonight's budget, which pretty much is the same layout we've done several years when Mr. Lunny was here. I'm going to open it up in a few minutes to have Mariah and our superintendent give us a PowerPoint presentation to give us a, pre a precursor, uh, I should say, of what's going on. And then we're going to get into right of the budget review and we're going to do the same thing we did with the town. We're going to have a motion by our school board rep, Mrs. Bridal Russell, for each section, seconded by Mr. Pluff. I'll entertain any questions on each section. Works out well that way. The viewers at home know what each section we're talking about and I will announce that. And just so that you know, budget committee members, if you looked in all the areas, we have a summary sheet, but before that, you have an excellent opening that Mariah put together uh, of the uh, proposed budget. 
accompanying with the summary sheet, you have sections that are numbered so you can look back and forth as we're speaking to those sections and if you have any questions. The other thing we want to do tonight when we review the budget, afterwards we're going to talk about the teacher's contracts, which also were put in your book. I would hope, fellow members, tonight that we can leave here with a vote to approve the budget, to go to the public hearing with a number, and also the teacher's contracts. I think we have an excellent layout. Again, there's a lot of uh, great things we're doing in our school system, and I'll, I'll tell you, it's amazing the number of things that encompass their budget. And you'll be uh, pleasantly pleased, and, and Superintendent Murphy, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the total increase was 0 0.037. Or that's correct. Exactly. That's, that's excellent. So at this time, and Mar Mariah, it was so good to sit with you too, and, and we you. wish you the best, and you know, you've been here for several years. So I'm going to turn it back over to you to give us that PowerPoint presentation. Uh, before I do also, I want to mention for the viewers at home, we do have uh, Jess Parsons, our special ed director in the office. We have chairman of the school board, Les Shepard. Other school board members, Frank DeLuca. We have principal of Marston School, Lois Coster, soon to be superintendent next July 1. And we have principal uh, David O'Connor from the academy. So thank you. I'll turn it at this time over to you. Great. You wanna, sure. Let's go the first slide. So just as I always do, first of all, thanks for having us. And um, on these, these last two days have been challenging for everyone. So we're glad we could be here and the, we could stay on schedule. So we appreciate the opportunity. Um, and uh, again, I'll always say to you, whenever there's questions and something comes up, even after this meeting, should you have questions, I, I know that Bob was not able to be with us tonight. I will reach out to Bob and uh, check in with him to make sure that he, if he had any questions regarding the budget, I can, I can, we can clarify it, or I or I can clarify it for him. So thank you. Uh, this year, you know, we under we undertook a new strategic plan in the district. Uh, the, the school board wanted to renew that process. It's a good tool for them to use as they plan for whatever happens now and in the future. And in that process, we probably held about oh, a dozen focus groups uh, all across the community, gathering information and input. We developed a strategic plan. We then took that plan and brought it to a smaller, pared-down committee because we saw well over 120 people in our focus group, so we knew that would be too cumbersome for us to move forward. But in doing so, we had a small group of parents, teachers, administrators, uh, and we, we uh, re renewed our mission statement. Uh, I wanted to include that in there. I think it's important that you all see what our purpose of the school district is and why we are presenting that budget tonight to you. And it is about all of our kids and engaging them and, and ensuring life and giving them opportunities for lifelong success. And, and also the vision statement was developed by this group and that's Hampton students will become responsible and respectful global citizens in our ever-changing world. Um, the board, uh, the committee then went on and identified four areas that they recommended to the board based on the strategic plan and based on needs in the district to um, ha set four goals this year. And the first one is, uh, is around um, communication, ensuring that we have uh, good communication uh, amongst our staff and amongst our parents and the community at large. The second one was creating a safe environment. That's really been a top priority for our board, ensuring that we have all of the pieces in place. You know, that's scattered throughout this budget. You'll see those kinds of requests in the budget. The third goal is uh, obviously the most, one of the most important things we do, and that's around teaching and learning and um, improving professional practice. So you'll see some things in the budget that reflect that goal. And then the last one is around equity and diversity. We have seen over the last, since I've been here in the last 10 years, we've seen a change in the demographics. Uh, we, our population has changed. And so it's really important that our teachers, our staff, our total staff, it, this goes from our, from our administrators right to, through to the teachers, to the paraprofessionals, our custodians, everyone, that they understand the implications around uh, equity and diversity. So we've been doing a lot of work in that area. So those are the four goals for us. Our budget is driven by those, those areas. <coughs> That's how we develop the budget. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Mariah. So now I am going to start talking numbers. <laughs> we'll try to um, make it 
short and sweet because I'm sure you have a lot of questions that we can get nitty gritty into. But the first Warren article is on the operating budget <coughs> and um, we're going to be discussing the proposed budget of $23,789,112. And then we'll go and discuss the default budget if the proposed is falls through. We'll have the default budget of $23,700,302. So from there, I just want to review quickly of this um, working current working 2019-20 budget. So our operating budget that we're working with this year is $23,722,686. So I just wanted to give you a little bit um, of what we'll be comparison. So that is the operating budget that we're working with this year. And then here's our proposed. I would like to start with and just focus on the default budget. Just take the default budget part. So the default budget, um, we would actually be decreasing by $22,384. It's a decrease of 0.09%. Um, and from that, I would like to just point out some of the main things that we are changing in the default budget. So our first is um, our teachers. Our teachers are um, at a decrease of $157,836. It's due to a lot of um, reflections on retirees from last year and switching positions and um, adjusting a few things from last year. Then we have our paraprofessionals and they would be budgeting for year two on a three-year agreement, and it was voted in March 2019. Um, the employees would advance one step in the salary schedule, and the increase would be $29,383. So from those areas, our health insurance costs are rising at 7.10% this year. Um, however, with all the changes to the employees, it is only affected at $43,176 and a decrease in all other benefits of 32505 So the other benefits would include the dental, the FICA, the unemployment, the workers' mark, et cetera. Can I jump yep, in? Jump in. So we were, we were a little surprised by the 7.1% increase. As you know, our health insurance premium uh, increases have been pretty minimal. As a matter of fact, over the last 10 years, the average increase has only been 1.6. That's an average increase annually of 1.6. So this was a little high. But we did look at, um, we analyzed why that might happen. And we had um, additional claims. And as you know, health insurance premiums are all based on claims. And the claims in our pool reflected that. So we will have a – this is a guaranteed maximum. maximum. So we will get in the spring, once they uh, analyze again all the data, we may see a decrease. We won't see anything higher than 7.1. So just so you know, I think the district has done an excellent job in, in maintaining and keeping health insurance premiums at a minimum. Uh, this was a little bit of a surprise to us this year. So then we have some changes in um, the special education default. We would like to um, move a position, repurpose a pair position um, at the pair position rate to a BCBA position. Um, and then just wanted to, to be noted that um, we are no longer getting federal funds for these positions. So that's why the increase of the forty-four, the $45,642. So the BCBA is, you're probably saying, what is a BCAB? <laughs> you know, what are all these initials? <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, we we, pro we should have written this out. But we have um, several people on staff that deal exclusively with behavioral issues. Those are youngsters who, for whatever reasons, it could be because of trauma, it because mental health issues, 
um, and just a variety of reasons that youngsters are really struggling with behavioral issues. These folks are trained. They, have, they go through a very intensive training. Uh, they get particular certifications. They have to hold certifications in these areas. And uh, they work across all three district, all three schools in our district. So we were ve the board was very sensitive to not adding any positions. They were very clear as we deliver as they deliberated on the budget, and I, I think Ginny can attest to this, um, that uh, they did not want to see other positions. So we knew that we needed to make sure that we had this uh, an assistant BCBAB, someone who helps that person with the youngsters that are struggling. All we did was we repurposed a paraprofessional that was already in the budget and repurposed that position to be a BCAB. So um, it, 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 it kind of a, accomplished two things. It accomplished us not adding a new position and but just repurposing a position that we already held. But in doing so, it was some increases because of the, um, the, the grant where we initially brought the person in uh, that those funds uh, were reduced, so we don't have that. We had to cover it by operation budgets. And then we come to um, our out of district placements, and um, we tuition accounts are it's just rising, and we had to add additional. So we have seven youngsters right now that are out of district place. Now, why do we do that? Because we want youngsters to be in their natural settings. We want them to be at home with, with their peers, where they live on the, whatever street they live on, right? And go to school with the kids that, they're, that, they're, that they associate with. But th there's sometimes that the district doesn't have the resources to be able to support those youngsters. And, and so um, with the process of an individual education plan, that's where everyone gets together, meets with the parents, with the teachers and the administrators and makes a plan to provide those resources and so this year we have uh, seven youngsters who um, are um, currently out of district placed. We have one youngster that I know that um, the special ed department is working with and um, so we have that one position in the budget. So you saw a ref what, what our budget reflects is a $75,000 increase to cover any of those costs. I'm going to take the numbers back. Okay. Okay. So then we have debt services. <coughs> and that has gone down by 3,943 <coughs> due to we no longer have the center um, bond. And then all other default changes comes to a credit of 21,301. And um, it's mixed in between facilities, transportation, and other. So I'm just going to give you, again, just a breakdown of our default budget. Um, again, it's a decrease of 0.09%. That's $22,384. So if we go back to our proposed 2021 budget, I would like to now focus on our um, request. And... The request increase is $88,810. That's a 0.37% increase. Um, the net proposed increase is 66426 which is a 0.28% increase from 2019-20. So that tax impact is two cents per thousand. So I'm just going to, like I did before, pull out the highs and lows and the main things for the proposed um, request of increase. So the first request is um, non-union salary wage increase of 3%. Um, it comes to $81,140. Um, but there's also a credit of 34192 in changes in administration. Um, and then benefit changes, um, health insurance, FICA, New Hampshire retirement, that affects that is $17,528. Um, we also are requesting teacher tuition reimbursements. Um, we have a program going on with um, college, and more and more teachers are taking the opportunity to utilize this um, 
I just want noted that their um, amount allotted for the year has not changed. It's just now we have actually more teachers that are actually utilizing it. So with that, we need to put that reimbursement cost up. Um, also, the update of accounting software for $6,961. Um, that is updating the accounting software. It's not changing it. It's making it web-based. Right now, we have it on our server. We um, take care of it. We maintain it. We have to have the server. This would be taking it off the server so that I, I or anybody else working from home or needing to not log into their computer anywhere can log in anywhere and get the information. That also, um, the company actually takes care of the data <coughs> and updates it. We don't do that. And um, so the technology department would have less involvement in um, our services. Um, so that is a one-time fee. The rates actually go back down. It's almost going to be close to $5,000 savings once it's set up. And then all other requests are a total of 5,373 mixed in between instructional transportation and um, facilities and the credit and facilities is mostly due to the Academy since we have done so much with the Academy we don't need as much money for furniture and supplies and such transportation the increase we've had a 3% increase in our contract and um, so there's <coughs> other requested so I just want to go back in and again and review our proposed budget um, so it's an increase of 0.37% of $88,810. Um, and then we have our revenues. So our revenues have not changed much through the years. Um, nothing to stick out other than our Medicaid has gone down in the past two years due to the laws changing. Um, but so we have a deep um, one of the areas that really took us by surprise in the fall was new um, emergency rules that were developed by Health and Human Services um, that really um, limited our ability to get reimbursement for Medicaid. Um, we often, um, there's money available for Medicaid to schools. That means when we have services to a youngster, speech and language, OT, PT, uh, counseling, uh, school psychologist, uh, testing, we can use uh, those uh, those activities and the funds that support that and send it to Medicaid and get reimbursement not a hundred percent reimbursement but we get partial reimbursement so we've been putting in about a hundred grand in there as a revenue however with the new rules that have and they were by the way emergency rules put in at the last minute um, the, those rules um, will not allow us to do anything without doctor's orders and the doctor's orders have to be um, a part of the team, the IEP team. So to counter that, we decided to stay low on the reimbursement in our revenues in case things didn't work out. But I assure you that um, our, the leader uh, of our special ed department and pupil services, uh, Jessica, has already uh, worked with 21 and I've found a solution to be able to do that. And, and hiring and having a uh, doctor on, on staff, on call, if you will, that can verify those requests and then will be reimbursed at the rate that we deserve. So I'm hoping that that all works out um, and uh, so we'll soon find out, but a uh, good strategy to, to, to counter those new amuse, uh, emergency rules. So that would end us for Warrant Article 1. Do you want to go through the budget now and then do that and I'd then like we'll go, to go on to two the and we'll and hold okay. off on this? Do you this. want to go what? Section by section or do you want to <coughs> move the bottom line? Uh, I'd like section by section because oh, well, you, you know <laughs> people tend to roam. I know. So I, yeah, excellent. Right. excellent. So if we could go to the summary section yep. and if I could have under total regular education, so that's section 1100. It includes salaries for teachers, uh, substitutes, contracted services, supplies. Uh, if you could move that uh, proposed number, Mrs. Bridal. $6,594,825. Moved by Mrs. Bridal Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Any discussion on this section? Hearing none. Okay, we'll move on to special education. I move $2,783,202. Second. 
Second. Seconded. Moved by Mrs. Bridal Russell. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Any uh, questions on the special education section? Mr. Morrow. Yes, I just had a, when I'm looking at your main here, I, it's just a question. I don't understand it. <clears throat> but it was 89000 in the actual expenditure, 2018 to 19, and then it went to 74000 so far the adopted budget to date. And then there's a 61 to 45,642 jump of 61%, which really brings it to 123. Could you just help me understand so that? Let me please? just stop you right there, though. What I'm asking the members to do, you need to say what page you're on, what section you're looking at, so that we can tell the voters. I'm the looking on the special education 1200. Um, okay, 1200, but yeah. page one. But what Their line are you on? Uh, if you go one, two, three. Four. Four lines down, four it four. says 89974 okay. and then this is 61%. I'm just trying to understand it. So that was the Paris contract agreement? Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that might be it when you were talking yep. earlier. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Ms. Capertis. I actually have a question. Um, I'm just trying to understand the, um, the movement from the para to the BCBA. Um, so is that, does a para receive uh, benefits as well, like health care benefits? Yes, they are, they okay. Are so there's really benefits. no, there's no change to that line item for moving an individual as a para into the BCBA position, is that correct? So there's no increased cost except for the salary change between the para the and the BCBA. We kept the yeah. um, we the kept the rate of um, pay at the same level. We just changed them from a para para professional that worked with a youngster um, to this behavioral position. So in this slide, um, where we were talking about special education default to, um, for the um, for the PowerPoint, the forty five thousand six hundred and forty two is not an increase it, from it, the para, we're just moving it from one pocket yeah, but that's not all to the, the para. other. Yeah, that's not. If we go to that page, um, I can find it. It's the 1200 page, page four. So 1200 tab, page four. At the bottom, so we have, a um, just they're labeled at the yep. top. Okay, so at the second half, um, yep. so we already have one BCBA now that has an increase um, rate of three percent. She um, she was partially paid through the grant, so that is going to be put in as full. And then we have another lady that um, was partially paid. And if you see the TBH, yep. that's who we would be putting in at the para rate. So it's just so the 24189 That would be moved from the para position, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's no increased future cost to moving this person from a para to the BCBA position. Okay. The, the only cost that we would, I would perceive might be some additional training because it is very specific. But uh, other than that, and we do that anyway as a, as a rule with our staff, so that would be the only place. But um, they, the power is full-time, so they get the benefits of the full-time, so it's not like additional costs there. Okay. The cost really occurred in that line because of the loss of the federal money. And so mm -hmm. we then had it. We, because the position was so important, we 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 funded it through the through the operation okay. budget. Does that make sense to you? It does. Yeah. Um, and I do have one other question that right I think ahead. is falling under this as well. Um, also in your PowerPoint presentation, you're talking about under the support and administration. It looks like there's a decrease in the administrative uh, administration cost of thirty four thousand. Mm -hmm. um, what is that? What's driving that number? A few positions in the administration that were cut. No, that's that have been changed. That's going to be in the section later on. We can talk about it. Okay. But that's down, but, we're going to go into that later. Okay. That's on the, right. the SAU district office. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then I'll wait for mm -hmm. I'll wait for the details on that. Um. Thank you. 
Any other questions on the special education piece? <coughs> All right. All right, we'll move extracurricular program 153672. Moved by Mrs. Browder Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. So extracurricular program, those are the salaries for the folks at home of coaches and advisors, after school activities, student assemblies, environmental camp uh, and supplies. Anybody have any uh, comments on that section? No. Summer school, $2,401. Moved by Mrs. Brado Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff, 2401. Salaries of summer school, pretty much it. And there's a, a line item for a dollar for supplies, which is just a placeholder at this point. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that? Guidance services, $429,379. Moved by Mrs. Brado Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff, 429 379 for the folks at home, guidance services, these are salaries for our guidance counselors, our salaries for a social worker uh, and an outreach coordinator, salaries for child and family interventionists, and I believe that's one of the positions we approved last that year, was correct? Position. That that's was the correct. position. And supplies of 1800 Anybody have any questions on this section? Okay, we move on to health services, $257,909. Moved by Mrs. Bridal Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Health services, pretty uh, self-explanatory. These are the salaries of our school nurses in all three schools, health aides, nurses assistant, contracted health services, and supplies. Do I have any questions or comments on this section? Related student services, we are moving $572,310. Moved by Mrs. Bridal Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Related student services, these are salaries for our psychologists, professional services with psychology, speech language pathologist, speech language assistant, speech language audiology, physical therapist, occupational therapist. You can see the magnitude of the great operation we have here. Um, any questions on this section? Go ahead, Mrs. Improvement of instruction, $118,535. Second. Moved by Mrs. Brado Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. This has to do with tuition reimbursement for teachers, testing, workshops, seminars, which are very important, in service training, professional development, curriculum work, salaries, curriculum supplies, books, all that kind of stuff, and then dues and fees. Anybody have any comments? I Ms. Capertis. Thank you. I just have one question. Could you explain to me the um, the tuition reimbursement, you said that one of the reasons why we're seeing that increase is because more teachers are going for um, for to improve their education. Um, and you, um, is that something that's always been? We've always had them? it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we just see we've seen more since. Right. Uh, in the teacher's contract, um, they're allotted two thousand dollars for course reimbursement as okay. per, per negotiations. Year. So that hasn't changed. The, that number stayed the same. But we've seen an increase in uh, uh, teacher, our teachers, our professional staff, um, accessing um, classes. And uh, we currently have a program uh, right in, in Hampton from Southern New Hampshire University. And so our teachers are taking classes after, after work um, uh, for three years uh, around curriculum instruction, leadership. And uh, so that ha we've seen an increase and an uptick in the numbers of uh, teachers. You know, the key for the district has always been a strong professional development plan. We think that if we're going to improve as a district, we need to have very highly skilled teachers. We do. We're very fortunate, and they're very eager to learn more. So the board has always felt very strongly that they should have access to the funds to be able to support that. I always say when teachers are strong and really know their stuff, the, the, the real benefactors are the kids. Thank you. Anybody, any, Mr. LeBranch. Um, that Southern New Hampshire University, are those online courses? No, at, well, they could, but most of them are face-to-face. -face. Um, the, and the real nice part about it is they have practitioners teaching the classes. Um, uh, local superintendents have taught it, uh, curriculum people, uh, people in the, in the field, so that the, the staff has really enjoyed it. We actually do it with uh, Rye, Portsmouth, uh, SAU 21 and SAU 90, we sort of created a, a cohort um, and um, uh, 
teachers have been taking it and love it. So Great. we'd Thank like to be able much. to continue to provide that for mm -hmm. them. Thank Excellent. you. Anyone else in this section? Okay, educational media, $263,091. Moved by Mrs. Brown Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. This is salaries for our librarians in the schools. And the biggest other part of that is books and printed material. Any questions on this section? Okay, educational television, 36080 Second. Moved by Mrs. Brido Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff, the salary of our media coordinator, and also cable media supplies. Just to note that that is funded by the franchise fees, so that's From a wash. Comcast. You'll see that in revenue side. It, um, it has been a fabulous opportunity um, for the community to have Channel 13 and um, as obviously the youngsters and the teachers and everybody gets involved uh, with it and uh, um, and our kids have have taken a part in that also and, and it's been very po a very positive yeah and then the quality is uh, I, I happen to watch it a lot too and uh, very very nice stuff on there really good Okay, we'll move to technology, 543,815. Moved by Mrs. Brown and Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Uh, this is an area, I'm gonna tell you, give you 100 gold stars, unbelievable. <laughs> the technology area, salaries for our technology, data management, salaries for summer, workshops, repair and maintaining computers, technology supplies, uh, lease of technology, software administrative. You will see almost every year and under the software administrative increases and why that is, I'm in that business too, the software is always changing and it's one of these things, you know, we see it on our phones with 4G and, and all the networks we're dealing with. The schools have to, you know, do the same type of things for software, so great, uh, great job on that. Any questions on the technology section? We saw a slight decrease in that, and yeah, minus somebody would say, five. yeah, why would you be doing that in yeah. an age where the things are changing so much? But we changed where we needed to change. Mm -hmm. But our director was pretty clear with us that he's done a, on a tremendous amount of work over the last five, six, seven years. Yes. And he just felt like this year he wanted to, to kind of stop, evaluate, look at what we have, um, really begin the research in the next phase of where they want to go um, in terms of technology. So this to, to him and to our district was to take a little bit of a breather, not that we're taking anything away, we're just not go reaching out and going and jumping into new things at this point. So that's why you saw a little bit of a decrease there. Mm -hmm. Support services, $305,252. Moved by Mrs. Brown Russell, Second. seconded by Mr. Pluff. Uh, one big area here is our three school resource offices, uh, yes. 226, 226,000. Salaries paraprofessionals, 77,796. Understand that the SRO shows an expense here, but it shows actually as revenue on the town side. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Okay, Board of Education, $77,201, and they do not have a percentage increase rate. Excellent. <laughs> thank you, you'd appreciate Move, that. Thank you very much. Yes, Moved uh, move by Mrs. Browder Russell, uh, second of Mr. Pluff. Well, I'd give you a raise, Jenny. Oh, yeah. thank you. Um, <laughs> SAU services. SAU services have changed because the people who brought us many years ago now to SAU 90 brought us into SAU 90, established SAU 90, and set the policies, the procedures, and helped the board. Uh, Kathleen Murphy as our superintendent, Nathan Lonnie as our business administrator, are leaving. So that the, they have been here and their experience and their years is why the, that line has decreased. Do you just want to move that for discussion yep. at 427? Uh, 427, 766. Six, six. Moved by Mrs. Brown Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. And what Mrs. Brown Russell, thank you, Jenny, for was referring to, you see a 34, approximately 34,192. <laughs> That's due to the director of finance and the superintendent of schools who the new p folks in those positions and those salaries will be different come 2020. Anybody have any questions <coughs> along with that or the rest of that section? Remember, this is the district depart this is the district area. So the budget of that, uh, the whole SAU 90 is 427, 766, and it's down due to what Mrs. Brown Russell said. Okay. All right. Now, school administration is 800316 Second. Moved by Mrs. Browder Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. These are salaries of our three principals, clerical support, uh, course reimbursement, telephone, uh, postage, uh, supplies, dues, and fees. And uh, anybody have any question there? All right. 
Okay, buildings, one million three hundred and seventy four thousand three hundred and eighteen dollars. Seconded by Mrs. Brado Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. This includes salaries of our facilities man uh, manager, uh, Mr. Keith Lassard, salaries, other support, custodians, substitutes, water expenditures, pest control, all kinds of uh, stuff, electricity, heating fuels, uh, you know, you name it. Anybody have any uh, comments on this section? I just have a quick question. Go ahead, Ms. Cabertis. Um, could you uh, define for me uh, who in this section would be receiving the overtime? That's the line item? That would be our okay. custodians and it would in our be, building okay. only. That, I mean, the okay. facilities manager doesn't have that in his, yeah. in his agreement. Right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so that's weekends, snowing, the sure. snow shoveling. They were probably, well, <laughs> they, they probably got a break today and yesterday. But that's if okay. there was a school day and yeah. we were opening, then they, you know, they need to be there. They were, Earlier. He usually mm -hmm. brings them in about 4.30. Okay. Um, they have to make sure that every entrance, every exit yep. is all shoveled, sanded, and appropriate. So that they, they um, understood. Yeah. Thank sure. you. Great. Thank you. Anyone else on questions on this session? Go ahead, Mrs. Bridal Russell. Okay. Grounds, $82,100. By Mrs. Bridal Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. This is our lawn mowing care, grounds repair, playground, mm -hmm. fields maintenance. Looks great. Anybody have any questions or comments on that area? Okay, vehicle expenses, $3,500. Seconded by Mrs. Brado Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Okay, next one is. On your behalf, oh. I did ask about the vehicle. <coughs> I did talk to yes. um, Mr. Lasalle. He's very, he's fine with it. He just, he's. Excellent. Um, and it's a, you asked me about it, was it a six cylinder? Yeah. Didn't you ask right. me that? Yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, good. So, um, yeah, he's, in, he's, all, set he's, with he's all set with his vehicle. <laughs> Good, thank you. Okay. Student transportation is $1,033,200. Moved Sorry. by Mrs. Brado Russell, seconded by Mr. Plupp. It's another large area, so you know, over a million dollars. You've got uh, bus, bus, transportation, field trips, you name it. So, uh, you know, it's, it's something we do. Any comments or questions? And I think Mariah Curtis said at the beginning that there was a new contract with the uh, Bus yep. company, which included that three percent, was it three percent increase? Yep. yep. Any comments or questions? All right. Okay. Employee benefits five million two hundred four thousand five hundred sixty dollars. Second. Moved by Mrs. Brado Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Any comments here? Okay. Debt service one million five hundred thousand six hundred eighty. Second. Moved by Mrs. Brado Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. You look at the principal and interest payments, it comes out a million and a half a year, and of course we're 25 year. Right, and the good news is we don't have any other bonds. Sen That's Center correct. was paid That's off excellent. in March in the year before, so mm -hmm. this is the only uh, debt you have. Yep. So that gives us a total of the general fund of twenty-two million five hundred sixty-four thousand one hundred and twelve dollars. Okay, and and then we have gross appropriation for food service and gross appropriation of federal funds. And, and go ahead. And that is a total of about twelve hundred twenty-five thousand one. I'm sorry. Seven twenty-five. And, and then you have the total operating budget, Jenny. Yeah, total operating budget of twenty-three million seven hundred eighty-nine thousand one hundred and twelve. So, ladies and gentlemen, as proposed, uh, excellent presentation so far it's on the SAU ninety proposed 2020-2021 budget. Say that about five times, Brian. You're really confusing. So, we went through each section. Everybody feel comfortable. Uh, we've all, for the most part, have had some time to review this. Uh, Pretty much, and I have to commend Kathleen and Mariah again for the presentation of how the budget put it, put it, budget book is presented. Uh, just all kinds of descriptions, very fine tuned on each of the areas and the backup <coughs> information. Um, I go ahead. Can I make a comment? Ahead, um, uh, I had a great question posed to me yesterday by Ms. Tamara. And um, I think it's one that we reflect on all the time. And you know, we spend 23 million, whatever. Um, and and what, what does that mean? You know, what are we doing? Are we showing improvement? Are we, are we using that money to improve? You know, we're not perfect. 
And every day there's new challenges for our teachers and our, our, our principals and our staff, all across the board, all, every one of them. And so um, it's really important to us that we look at how our students grow. I know that everybody isn't always in love with test scores, and we're not talking about test scores. I'm looking at the growth of students. How do they grow from year to year? Do we show growth in this district? Are our teachers delivering the curriculum and are our administrators making sure that that's happening, right? Um, and that our, the rest of our staff is providing the kind of safe environment for kids. And so I went back and I, I, I looked at the data and it was really, it was good to see. And it's new data, which I'm really pleased. The Department of Ed has now taken our assessments and, and, and shown it year to year. And it's available, you can see it. It's right on the website in the Department of Ed under um, iPlatform and it will give you all this data. But I was looking at growth and how do our students do at every single grade level. And we're not perfect, but we're showing above average growth, above average um, in terms of more kids are demonstrating growth every year in the district at every grade level. So I think that's important to know. And uh, the, the principals had a chance a month or so ago to look over that growth because that's really important to them and making sure that our kids are growing and that we're providing them with the resources. And again, we're not perfect. We have new challenges every day. One of the other things that has really um, tested us in our business, um, and I think that uh, knowing that Ginny is a, works in, in preschoolers, um, we have been tested with the changes in um, uh, some of our student populations. And um, those challenges have been based around crises in children's mental health. Um, they have been the results of opioid crises where families are torn apart by this drug addiction. And so now we have children who come to school and have had trauma, it's trauma in their life. And you know that when, you know what it's like, right, if you're anxious and something's happening in, in your family, right, you get all, you get nervous, right? You get, mm -hmm. you, you worry, you worry. Well, look, look, the kids are coming to school and they're worried. And so um, the effect of learning is, is a challenge. And so we've been training and spending and professional development um, around helping our teachers understand the impact of things like the opioid crisis, children's mental health and behavioral health, as well as trauma. And so we've spent a lot of time on that this past two years. Um, and, and because we know that if we can focus on that and help kids with those issues, then we will continue to see that positive growth um, in, in our students' academic performance. Um, and I, I think, was, go ahead, Janine. Uh, yesterday, Portsmouth Herald, Sunday's Portsmouth Herald, had a great article on the front page about trauma and everything that Portsmouth is doing. It's the number one issue facing classrooms um, today is kids coming to school with a lot of stuff they can't handle. Mm -hmm. And we've done a lot of work. And I have to give kudos to Meg O'Connor and Amy Hansen because they've started a parent information program where they're sponsoring different groups to come into the new auditorium and speak. And I think it's very important that parents are aware of these issues. They, last time, I think it was on... Um, last week it was on suicide. And she's going to get into a whole, all the spectrum of the trauma. And I think it's a very good thing that we're bringing this out in the public because it is here. It is here. When you, we, we, uh, we, you might say, well, we're a K-8 district. We, we wouldn't be dealing with those issues. Make no mistake, we are dealing with these issues, and the folks behind me will attest to that, um, where they have had situations where they have had to deal with those kinds of um, um, mental health issues, and they are very challenging. And again, remember, our purpose, <laughs> right? Our purpose is around teaching and learning. Uh, and so um, I, I just thought it was important to bring that up. I thought David's question to me and his, his challenge for me to think about was really important. And um, I, I, I hope that that, and I know that that will continue uh, in this district. Mr. LeBranch. I just want to comment. Um, <clears throat> I had a conversation with Kathleen as well. And uh, an epidemic presently is suicide. That is a big national problem. And in our conversation, um, you discussed that you have a team that as soon as a, you know, a student is identified, the team is right on it 
to help that student. And you know, it's it's a it's a very big thing nationwide. Very big deal. I'm really happy that um, uh, again, uh, Jessica Parsons, our director for student services, and our um, and our wellness coordinator, uh, Janine Richards, um, have worked with SAU 21. And so that collaboration in SAU 16, uh, Exeter, has been doing a lot of work. So mm -hmm. the three of those groups together have formed a, they call it the BIT team, Behavioral Intervention Team, BIT. And that's where they will. They will monitor that kind. They will be ready uh, and to intervene and, and, and to support a, a youngster in crisis. So uh, the, actually the school board is going to get a presentation on that very topic at the board meeting on Tuesday night, so stay tuned. I think it will be very informative. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Excellent. Any other comments on the overall budget or any feelings on this side? So before we get into the Warren articles, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Mrs. Brada Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff, have moved an operating budget number to the public hearing on January 16th of 23 million seven hundred eighty-nine thousand. 112. <coughs> Let me remind the folks that we're me we're me we are recommending this budget to public hearing. So at the public hearing, there could be and possibly there will be some changes and probably a decrease. Uh, some may be an increase. That always happens. So this is a number we have to move to the public hearing, which will be held for the viewers at home in the uh, New Hampton Academy Auditorium on January 16th. Do I have a motion to move the bottom line number? I'll Moved by point. Mr. LeBranch, Second. seconded by Mr. Henderson to move a bottom line number of $23,789,112. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Now should we move the revenues? Forward? Let's move the revenues, Jenny. Okay. The the revenues are one million eight hundred and sixteen thousand five hundred dollars. Moved by Mrs. Bridal Russell. Second. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Repeat that number one more time, Jenny. One million eight hundred and sixteen thousand five hundred dollars. All those in favor? Unanimous. So we finished up the operating budget. Thank you for that. Now we're going to move into the three remaining articles on the warrant. Uh, starting with Article 2, a little preface before I turn it back over to the administration. Uh, the current teacher contract ends on June 30th, 2020. And this is the, they are currently in a four year. They are now going through another, with, uh, hopefully proposed budget, a warrant article to voters vote <coughs> on the salary increases. That's what we get as voters. So as you see in front of you and the viewers at home, there are proposed each year one through four estimated increase. I'm going to turn it back over to Superintendent Murphy to explain. We all have our sheets that were given to us, the scorecard of the fiscal items. Yes. And Mariah, if you want to talk about that. So the scorecard is also on the very last page of the booklet that I gave you. Yep. So you can look at that. Um, so it is Warnock Article 2, the Teachers Collective Bargaining Agreement. It is a four-year agreement. Um, we would estimated increase that we would need to collect this year would be um, $433,336. Um, this is just a picture of the scorecard uh, that you have on the last page. Um, so the first year um, on the steps, the lower steps would get a 3% increase. The, the first 12 steps would get 3.75. Um, and then the year two, three, and four, they'd advance one step and get 2.25% increase. Um, for longevity, they would like to increase the payments by $100 year one and then add a new category that adds 150 for year 25 employees. Um, year two, no change. Year three and year four increase 100 each year. Um, the health insurance, no change in year one. But on year two, three, and four, they would be giving back 1%. 
And then um, retirement stipend, no change on year one and two, but in year three, they would like to increase to the $600 per year of service and then $45 per sick day. Um, and then year four, no change. And then they would like to increase the stipend pool for activities. Um, we haven't increased that um, in, a, in quite a while. 10 years. Ten years. And um, so that's all the coaches. The coaches. And, and, then, and then it's hard to find people sure. right now. Mm -hmm. So and that's just one year, of course, according to the. Just one year. Yep. Yeah. Just increase it that one year. So, so, so let me talk a little bit about our teaching staff. We have 118 professional teachers, all of them who are required to be licensed. Um, they must maintain a certain number of hours in, um, in order to maintain their license. But you can put your teachers in Hampton up to anybody um, in the state as far as I'm concerned. Um, they're dedicated and committed to the kids here. And I think that's probably why we see such a great growth in every year in student performance. Um, you know, you saw other things like increases in coaches' salary and increases in after-school activities. Well, guess who does that? Our teachers. Yeah. Um, and so you, 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 I, I just can't leave this topic without um, talking about their work. Um, when there's new curriculum, when there's new issues around trauma, the teachers that are behind that, when there's a new curriculum, teachers are helping to develop that. that that's not even pay that's not paid. That, that's just part of what they do every day. Um, and when we talk about uh, new programs around social emotional learning and helping kids with around mental health issues, those are all of our support staff, our school psychologists, our guidance counselors, our nurses. <coughs> so all of those professional staff, um, uh, in my opinion, are second to none. Um, it, one of the things that our and, and this this happened during negotiations, and, and I, I would agree with this. Um, they took a back seat the last um, three years uh, to Hampton Academy. They knew the community desperately wanted to do something in a facility that would um, mirror the expectations in the community. Uh, they wanted an, a building that would be part of their village a, as it is in, in, the, in the Hampton Village, um, but that represented them. And I think they achieved that, but the teachers sacrificed. They had very low salary increases during those times when other districts were getting a much healthier salary. But they took it and they, they accepted it and um, uh, they, they, deserve, uh, they deserve the 3% uh, that they're gonna get next year. Uh, the teachers in the steps, they get a 3.75 of the step, and the top step teachers don't get a step anymore. They reach the top, they reach a max, and so they're only getting three. But uh, they, they deserve that. Um, they've earned that. We also know that um, SAU 21 just um, had a contract that passed last year uh, by the communities and all of their, their communities, mm -hmm. Northampton, Southampton, you know, all the, the Seabrook, Winnicunnan. And this contract very much mirrors that contract that was passed last year. And so um, uh, they, they are trying to, if you will, they are trying to keep up with the Joneses. You know, you want to do that. If you want to uh, maintain teachers, if you want to retain teachers, you, you're not like anybody else, right? They, they, they need to be given a fair uh, wage for their work. And I think and I believe that this contract does that for them. Um, Before I get back to the budget committee, just so that the folks at home know, as well as members here, the teachers at SAU 90 are still part of the Seacoast Education Association. That's, That's very correct. important because when you talk about collaboration, the Sean Tierney's, the Liz Dow's, the Amy Murphy's from SAU 90 worked with John Croto, who happens to be a teacher at Lincoln High School, who was also the head of SEA. Uh, the SEA. It, that's important because it's they're not separate entities. So SAU 90 doesn't have their own collective bargaining. They're still part of SEA. And once again, you bring all the factions together, and I think it's worked out well. I'm going to start over here uh, on these contracts. Mr. LeBranch, do you have any questions or comments? No, sir. Mr. Mara? No. Mr. Pluff? No. Mr. Henderson? No. Ms. Capertis? Um, I probably have the uh, the most questions only because it's my first year, okay. so Great. please, I apologize. And I have to believe that there are probably people at home that have these same questions. So um, 
for the teachers, um, the 118 teachers that you just, um, that you said that are part of SAU 90, what percentage of them are considered steps 1 through 12 versus 13 through 16? Do you know that number? Um, I do. Uh, just give me a minute, though. I have to think about it. Um, we have uh, 42 teachers on the top. Okay. And the rest of our teachers are in the step system. Um, so for a teacher who, let's just say, is step one, um, for the first, for year one, they'll get the 3.75% increase. That's correct. And then in year two, they would step to uh, step two and receive the 3.75 plus the 2.25%? Correct. Okay. We, you know, you essentially in a teacher in in the teacher program with step system, they essentially are paying. You are paying them the uh, the year of experience. Think about it like that. And then obviously the 2.25 uh, is relative to the cost of living. Now, as you know, the cost of living varies from month to month, but um, on average and recently almost close to three percent. So. That we kind of use that as a barometer. So there's a guarantee of 3.75 percent increase in salary, and then the the co the cola the cost of living increase of 2.25. Right. I I I tend not to use the word guaranteed because our teachers need to go through an evaluation system. Um, teachers that are um, like a, a second year teacher would have three formal evaluations. Would have. Um, wa uh, walkthroughs by their principal and summative evaluations and then based on their performance over the year the, the principal would recommend to me whether they get their step or not. So, uh, you know, we have really high performing teachers yeah. so for the most part Understood. that happens but there are occasions when teachers are not given their step because they're, they still need more time so they stay at the step. So it's not a guarantee. Okay. All right. Thank you. You know, that was an excellent question, and the viewers at home will watch these meetings, you know, to explain it. That was very good, very good. Thank you. Mr. LeBranch. Just um, for the viewers at home, and everybody here might want to know as well, what's the average starting pay for a teacher coming in brand new? First step. Just, just a, an average. 42,000. Yeah. 42, oh, 42. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Mr. Bright. All set, thank you. This is Brother Russell. All set. You know, one of the comments, Stephen, that made me think of what you just said, I've said this, you know, publicly, privately, wherever people meet me, and I said, you know, outside of your parents, who do your kids spend more time with? Teachers and coaches and people who advise them, and it's, so it, it's kind of a neat thing. Um, I'll accept a motion for Warren Article 2. So moved. Article 2 to the public hearing. To a public hearing on the uh, estimated increase for 2020, 21, 21, 22, 22, 23, 23, 24. The, uh, and then, of course, the appropriate the first year, 433, 336. Moved by Mrs. Brado Russell. Second. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Any further discussion on the uh, teacher's contracts for SAU 90? All those in favor? So we have seven in favor. And for the public at home and here, as everyone knows me, I'm full disclosure. So I have a wife who's in ni her 19th year teaching at Hampton Academy. She's taught 37 years in the state of New Hampshire. I'm so proud of her. But I think it's my due diligence to abstain from this vote. I think that's a uh, thank you for doing that. And, and I also want to make a point that Mr. DeLuca also abstained for that same reason uh, as a member of the school board. I think you saw it on the um, draft warrant that we presented to you tonight. Mr. DeLuca's wife is also a teacher at Hampton Academy, and he abstained. Yes, thank you. And nice job on that. Okay, so. On to Article 3, the long-term maintenance, $300,000. You'll notice that the Academy is not on this because hopefully everything at the Academy is done. Mm -hmm. So to explain, again, uh, this is an excellent article. I, I'm all for maintenance, training, you name it. It's been on for several years, and we don't have... Uh, this year, as Mrs. Browder Russell so eloquently said, the Hampton Academy, because we just put in a beautiful uh, enhancement to that. You will notice, my fellow members, so for Marston School and Center School, the thing that sticks out the most, which actually works in our favor, not having the Academy as part of this plan this year, 
we have the total of $70,000 to remove oil tanks, yeah. remove old oil tanks from the Marston School and the center. Superintendent Murphy, uh, you would tell me that is, those were instituted in 1980? Yes, and it's time. And the biggest, the other big chunk that we use, and, and this is a great way to do these maintenance things, it's worked out well, um, and the modernization of the 1991 passenger elevator at the center school. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it is. Anybody have any comments on uh, this section? Who's tomorrow? Yes, I do. <clears throat> when you're removing the oil tank, are you replacing it or you have changed your heating system? Um, um, at Hampton Academy, we removed them and we, we changed our heating system. You probably but in Center and Marston, we still have oil burners. So, but when you right. get rid of the oil right. tanks, it's natural New gas. ones are going in, right. Thank you. Yeah. And the other one was, I was kind of surprised, but I haven't seen the third grade wing, but $4,900, I'm assuming it's a big door. Yeah, it's a door. <laughs> we've, had a tr we've had a lot of problems with it. It's in the wing. If you go into Marston, there's two wings that go out <coughs> this way, and it's, it's at ground level. And what happens is um, frost heaves and various other weather conditions cause all kinds of havoc there and we get a lot of flooding in that door, so they've got to dig it all out and replace the whole, the whole system there. So mm -hmm. we've been trying to find alternative solutions. Keith has not been happy with it, but that's, that's what he would like to do next Thank year. Thank you. Yeah. And by the way, a plug-in for Mr. Lassard. I yes. mean, you know, who doesn't love Mr. Lassard, right? Um, and um, he just does a great job. He's, you know, he's just here all the time, always, you know, working towards improving the safety and security and the health and well-being of those school buildings. So great guy to work with. You know, it's interesting, and I, I, every time I see center school especially, I think of Mr. Plough, Mrs. Brown, Russell, and I, you know, you talk about collaboration uh, through the years. In the late 90s, we put off Route 1 one year, and John Walker came to visit us and said, can we all work together and have the center school have their day? That's when things were really cooking, right? So that's why it's so important you see the history of where these things have come. And then the Marston School, with was a committee for that, and then the Winter kind of some of you in the audience were part of it, the Winter kind of additions and the auditorium and everything, and now, of course, the Academy. But all that came as a result of great maintenance ideas and what is needed for our facilities. If we're going to ask the taxpayers for a lot of money, let's maintain them, right, Stephen? So anybody have any further comments? Uh, Mr. LeBranch. I just want to mention that this is a, <coughs> this Warren article, we've been doing that every year for oh, mm -hmm. yeah. a number of years, so it's the, it's not anything new. And I also want to just mention that I see under <coughs> both Marston and Center Schools, the LED lighting upgrades, and I'm really happy to see that because in the long run, we will save a lot of money. Yes. Okay, so thank you very much. Excellent. Mrs. Capertis. And just along those same lines about the LED lighting where it says phased, so is that a number that we will just see that will be recurring? Every year. Or every year for, until so every single light bulb is Correct. <laughs> okay. Thank we you. take a wing or a okay. section at a time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thanks. Great. So can I have a motion to move the 300,000 Article 3 to a public hearing on January 16th? Yes. Moved by Mrs. Brado Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. Any further discussion on Article 3? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, unanimous. Okay. And the last one, go ahead. Jim. I would move Article 4 to public hearing. It's the uh, Sacred Heart $43,975 for Child Benefit Services. This is a petition warrant article by Sacred Heart and the parents thereof. And it's something that we put in the ballot as long as they presented the petition. So yeah, moved by that. Mrs. Brad Russell, seconded by Mr. Fluff. Just so the view is at home, this has to be a private petition article because it's money that is being expended by the Hampton School District, i.e. taxpayers, through Sacred Heart School. And I have to tell you, there were years in this community where this number was in the 80s and 90s. This is a great deal for the town. And I think everybody overwhelmingly votes at 43975 to send the uh, residents of Hampton, their children that choose to go to Sacred Heart School. We also provide nursing services for that, for the Sacred Heart School, which the, uh, they, they use that money to get, to provide those nursing services. That's correct, services. yep. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any uh, comments on this section? Pretty straightforward. Uh, accept a motion to move 43975 to a public hearing. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Brado-Russell, seconded by Mr. Pluff. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. 
unanimous. A couple of housekeepers before we end uh, this evening. The uh, public hearing for both town and school budgets of the school will be first uh, on June, on January 16th at the new auditorium in Hampton Academy, uh, as well as uh, for the Views at Home Deliberative Session, February 1st for the town on a Saturday, and the following Tuesday, February 4th, for the Hampton School District SAU 90 will also be held at the Hampton Academy Auditorium. Uh, I just had, uh, anybody have any closing comments? I had a few before we go, but I'll go around the table. Also, uh, Mr. Henderson. Yeah, I just want to uh, throw out a plug there for uh, very blessed in this town to have such a uh, tremendous core of teachers and administrators. And uh, I know my kids uh, both benefited tremendously through the school program here. The uh, raises, et cetera, that's coming before the uh, public are very fair um, for where we stand right now. The budget's very fair. But I also want to say something uh, for uh, Superintendent Murphy. You know, for the last nine years, you've done a tremendous job for this town. You know, year in, year out, you brought a, uh, a very fair budget in front of us. Um, you know, you haven't um, put anything that would, uh, you know, say you go outside the box for the tax page. did a great job, uh, you know, kind of overseeing the uh, new school at Hampton Academy Junior High. And I uh, can't thank you enough for uh, what you've done and what the, all the administrators and everybody's done for uh, the town of Hampton and where we are today. And I thank you for everything you've done. Thank you, Steve. Personally, I, I uh, absolutely concur. And I, I might add, uh, for those at home, too, and I certainly overwhelmingly concur, concur with the comments about uh, Superintendent Murphy. SAU 90 was established in 2011 when Superintendent Murphy was hired, so come next year, it'll be nine years. And everything good about this district has been expanded by the leadership that she's brought in. You have to remember that there was a lot of discussion when we went to SAU 90, when everything got separated out. And um, her leadership, her ability to communicate, the budgets have been fantastic. I think the educational component, which you have so much come from that background, has been at your forefront. Uh, I will tell you as a personal aside, and I've said this to many of you privately, publicly, uh, Kathleen's reputation around the state of New Hampshire is phenomenal. And I happen to know a few superintendents who have worked with her through the years. And this school district and this community will miss your leadership. I certainly wish Mariah Curtis the best of luck. You come with high accolades. And of course, Nate Lunny and you worked together for years. And he's doing very well up in Portsmouth. I think at the end of the day, one of the things, and as I end, that Superintendent, Superintendent Murphy did probably even better than others before her, I never, never saw a more cohesive relationship with other department, town boards, state boards, PTA, bringing everybody together. That is phenomenal because it is, it is really risen to that ex, what we call the excellent factor. This is your last budget uh, as far as meeting, as, as far as uh, talking about the budget, although we have the public hearing. Any uh, final thoughts, not to embarrass you, any final thoughts you want to say to the viewers at home and to the budget committee? The, thank you, first of all. Yeah. Um, but you know what, it, it, leadership is about being surrounded by the right people. And I've always believed that. I, I never felt that a leader uh, could really exert themselves um, without people around them. High quality, uh, effective, dedicated, commitment, committed people. And I have been so lucky. Um, I've had school boards who, who allowed um, uh, the leadership, and that includes our administrators, um, the opportunity to lead. You know, that, 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 that helps. It, you, you can lead, you can make recommendations, you can bring things forward. But every door I've knocked on in this town, whether it was the public works department, whether it was the library, the police department, the fire department, it didn't matter what door I walked, knocked on. And Nathan and I knocked on every door when we came here. We visited everybody. It was kind of like, what is she doing here, right? But um, the, 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 the reception um, from the community and the support of the schools made my work just that much easier. So please understand, I, I'm pr I was privileged to be here. I'm, I, 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 I will always carry a, a fond memories of my work here. Um, 
but it, it, is, it is everybody. It's a team. It's all of us working right. together. You said it before. It's, it's the collaboration that's so important. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Murphy. Mr. LeBranch. I just want to make one other comment um, to thank everybody for coming out on a night that is a little bit less than perfect. Mm -hmm. um, the roads are wet. They're probably icy as well. Please, everyone, drive carefully on your way home, okay? And thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank We've you. had a few more uh, administrative okay. things at the end, and we'll be wrapping up. But thank you, and thank you the school board members for showing tonight, and cer certainly Jess Parsons as well. We appreciate that. And we'll see you at the public hearing on January 16th. Looking forward to that. <laughs> so we have a couple more things um, on the agenda. Uh, on, under master plan, I think I'm going to put that off until next week or whatever. I know Barbara wasn't at the last meeting, but keep taking that survey out on the town website on the very first page. Scroll the bottom. It's so important to take that master plan. It takes a minute to do it. That's it's right. Important. And Rusty has been announcing it. We appreciate it. Mr. Barbara mentioned it to Selectman's meeting. Rusty, any Selectman's report tonight? Nope. Mm -hmm. We have the parade Saturday. Parade is Saturday. <laughs> and the tree lighting tree Friday, Friday night. Friday night. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Brown Russell, I take it your school board report, you've already given it. But already given it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hampton Village deal. District, uh, Mr. Ladd isn't here, uh, although I can tell you that Channel 9 loves the Hampton Village District because I think they've been down there since Saturday night. So we get to, yeah. see, we get to see all the great stuff down the beach. Um, under Anything under new business? Upcoming meetings, a reminder. December 10th, next Tuesday, there's, a, there's just one minor change uh, on Tuesday. We are now, and the Vice Chair and I have talked about this, we are now going to have Public Works and the other departments. Mr. Maher had brought up an excellent point with the Warren articles that we may need a little more time. So I talked with Town Manager Welch and he, he thought this was a great idea. So we're going to be a busy night Tuesday night. But then it allows us to have the 12th and the 17th for extra time to do final review and get into the Warren articles, because I know the selectmen just started reviewing them. And as Russ can tell you, it's probably going to still take a few more. And we still have January 14th for anything final. Mm -hmm. So be prepared. Tuesday night will probably be, it's not going to be the hour meetings. We will probably be here till 930, but we're going to get everything done. The departments will go first. Uh, the weather's looking good through next Tuesday. Tuesday, I already checked. Monday looks rainy. But <laughs> the department heads will go first, meaning, uh, you know, building department, town clerk, yeah. tax clerk, legal, and then the public works uh, will come in, and then we'll finish off with them. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead, Ms. Chris. Are the warrant articles for the other departments available to us prior to Not when yet. they present them? Not yet. Not okay. until the selectmen finally make okay. their changes and propose them. Right. Okay. And then we'll get so them. So we'll see them on oh, Tuesday, yes. Thursday, and the following Tuesday. Uh, well, it depends once awesome. again. And that's why I ask everybody to watch the selectmen's meetings because um, there was some good, mm -hmm. really good discussion by the selectmen. I mean, the budget they presented was excellent. Mm -hmm. The Warren articles, I'm looking and saying, yeah, we need this stuff. So, you know, the lock roads, the, 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 all the other stuff that needs to be changed. I mean, we've got to start doing these major roads every year, at least one at a time. So yeah, you go okay. on. I would ask you to go on and watch the replay, but the minute, you know me, I'll send out information the minute Mr. Bridal uh, sends it along. But I, I think it's, it's a great discussion and um, I feel good about kind of having the other groups come in. It gives us that extra time. We didn't know we were gonna get snowstorms back to back and knock on wood, we were able to come out tonight. Did, well, did you have a meeting last night, Rusty? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, that yeah. means I've got some homework again. Uh, and very short ones. It'll only take a little bit of one, about a half hour. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Motion to adjourn at 8.30. Moved by Mr. LeBrand, seconded by Mr. Pluff. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, Channel 22. Channel 22. Yeah.